Hi, my name is Savannah Jackson, and I wanted to take a second before we get into the rest of this video to talk about what you are about to see. This is my senior project, instigated as a support to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning group of people as a whole. And um, the people you're about to see, myself included, are either volunteer actors or professionals in their job area in the case of teachers and such. The terms and labels used are just that. They're, they're terms and labels. Someone identifies however they want to. I'm talking about individuals here, and this project is meant to educate and inform just as a general support. The issues discussed are on a basis of human love and sexual attraction. See, the thing is with sexual attraction is that just because you're sexually attracted to someone or a group of people doesn't mean you want to pursue them. You could be in a committed relationship or uninterested in a relationship or whatever. You could be sexually attracted to women, but that doesn't mean you want to be in a relationship with every woman you see, whatever that may entail. Just because you identify a certain way doesn't make you strictly one thing or another. It, in the case of children or whoever else, it doesn't matter. And I want people to keep in mind this is about education, and I ask for everybody watching these videos to keep an open, open mind in regards to the presented information. Again, this is a message of support, and I ask that you please respect that, and I thank you for your brief attention. Now on to the video. Just like some of you, I'm heterosexual. That means I like people who are the opposite sex of me. That doesn't mean I can be cruel to others that are different from me, or be affronted when someone of my same sex flirts with me. Most of the world is heterosexual, so I don't have such a hard time fitting in. Just because I'm straight doesn't mean I'm any better or worse than anybody else. It's just another sexuality. Because I don't ever have to come out to anyone, I don't have as much to worry about in regards to being rejected for who I am. But I can still be an ally and a decent human being to those who aren't like me, because love is love. Just as I expect to be treated with respect, I'll treat others with that same respect. Homosexuality is, a commonly, is commonly known throughout the world as being second to heterosexuality. People tend to automatically assume, if someone's not heterosexual, they're homosexual, and thus a threat. They feel that because we love people like us, that means we will attack them or force ourselves upon them, but that's just not true. We're just like everybody else. If someone doesn't like us, we'll back off. It's just that simple. The main thing we'd like you to remember are that we are not a threat. People tend to think that just be that because we play for the same team, that means our friends of the same sex can feel comfortable around us, so they shouldn't either. Do you feel comfortable yeah. with your friends without wearing the bed on you? Well, that same idea can be applied to your gay friends. What? Just because we're coming out to you doesn't mean we're trying to hit on you, nor does it mean we're a threat. Nor are we confused. Don't tell us we, uh, we haven't found the right person yet in gay. You know what's hard? Being invisible is hard. When you're bisexual, people assume you're confused, just experimenting to see whether you're straight or gay or whatever. Say I'm a man and I'm with a man. People are going to assume I'm gay, but when I'm with a chick, it's assumed I'm straight. It's never considered that I might be bisexual, that I swing one way more than another. Yeah, there are a lot of people that identify as bisexual before they come out as something else, but that doesn't mean that the rest of us are transitioning, that we're confused about who we are, or that we don't identify the way everyone else does. We're not trying to get with everybody we see, just like you aren't either. It'd just be great to be recognized as well, instead of being lumped with everyone else. When a person says, what's the point of even coming out as asexual? What business is it if you don't want to have sex? They're not really considering the social implications of not desiring sex. An asexual male doesn't participate in locker room talk and is accused of being a virgin or being gay. He doesn't say, oh, look how hot this person is. And guys, and while guys around him are complaining about blue balls or their girlfriends or boyfriends not putting out, he just can't really relate. 
An asexual female is frigid, and if she's pretty, she's a teen. It's really isolating. It's not that asexuals are being vocal for their rights or as the others are. It's about raising awareness. Most people have the opinion that asexuality isn't even a thing. It's not the worst thing you've ever heard of, right? It's pretty much like being Jewish on Christmas. For asexuals, sex is like a donut. When we see a donut, we don't have the urge to go and eat it. This doesn't mean that we hate the donut or we think that it's disgusting. Many of us might even like donuts, but we just never have the urge to walk over there and eat it. It's a valid way to feel, because it's an invisible sexuality, the way that bisexuality is invisible. Because when you see a bisexual man with a man, you assume he's gay. And when you see a bisexual man with a woman, you assume he's straight. When you see an asexual person, you assume they're single and looking, or single and unfulfilled, or single and surrounded by cats. You assume they're just as interested in sex as you. And if they say, eh, no, no, uh, thank you, but I don't want that ever. You assume that they're broken somehow. I'd just like to be able to say, I'm asexual. And have them recognise the word rather than splitting in half and reproducing. That's all. A lot of people don't understand demisexuality and that's hard to deal with. Basically, we don't feel sexual attraction to someone unless we first bond romantically with a person. Our identities are also assumed according to what sex our partner is. We're more looking for recognition and understanding when people ask us about our sexuality. Sometimes, it's like I'm invisible. Like, well, of course I want to have sex with someone I love, but it's much more than that. I'm not sexually attracted to anyone I'm not romantically attracted to first. That's just it. I know how I feel. Please don't make me feel inferior for my insexuality. Gray asexuality is another sexuality some people don't understand. We are sexuals in the sense that we don't really feel sexual attraction towards anybody. However, we do on the rare occasion, which may or may not correspond with romantic attachments, unlike demisexuality. It is literally the gray area between asexuality and other sexualities. That doesn't mean we can't do romantically, we can't be romantically attracted to feel love. It's just we generally don't feel the need for sex like those of our counterparts. It'd be cool to be able to come out and have people understand me. When I first came out to my mom, she thought I was sexually attracted to pans. Pans! After I explained myself, she thought I was confused and making up pansexuality. She didn't think I'd looked it all up for myself, you know? She patted my hand and told me I just hadn't found the right man for me. It's been six months. She still asks if I have a boyfriend and has forbidden me from dating my girlfriend. My dad doesn't even talk to me anymore. It's hard, because people who see me with my girlfriend, Sammy, think I'm gay. Others who hear about my ex-boyfriend think I'm straight. And then, don't get me started on the teacher who thought my dad raped me. So, I was gravitating towards women, or something. And then, what was interesting was when I had a transgender partner. Talk about a real headache with the school counselor. Look, I'm not confused and I'm not bisexual. I do not care about gender or looks. So much as personality. I have no preference except that I find intelligence extremely sexy. That's personal preference, though. But I mean, so what? Who really cares? Oh, and then, this is the best part. Because I'm pansexual, I've been seen as a threat in the locker room. I'm not allowed in, and I'm often late to class. I've been turned away from my room during school trips. I had to sleep in the hall. Do you know how hard that is? Not to mention dangerous? All the girls hate me, and the guys keep pressuring me to publicly make out with Sammy. I just wish it would all go away. Can't I just be me? Please? A lot of people confuse my sexuality. They think I'm bisexual or pansexual. If they know that term, I'm not. 
I'm polysexual, meaning I feel attracted towards more than one gender. I could be attracted to any combination of men, women, transgender, or gender fluid individuals, but I'm not sexually attracted to all genders like a pansexual is. I care about what's between my parents' legs, but I don't lean in a particular direction like a bisexual person does. It's a real sexuality. It would be great to actually be taken seriously for being who I am. I was actually going to have a transgender friend explain to you guys what it's like being transgender, but unfortunately she, um, some, some things happened, so I'm filling in for her and I'm going to say what she would have said in her place. Being transgendered is quite difficult. You're stuck in a body you hate. You're being forced to see it every time you look down, every time you look in the mirror, etc. Everyone calls you the wrong name, and when you tell them to call you something else, they kind of scoff and they look at you funny. When you wear the clothes you want, or, you know, go out in public, people laugh or they jeer, and every time you speak, it's the wrong voice that comes out. Everywhere you go, people judge you for just being who you are. Even simple things, such as going to a public restroom, becomes a hazard. If you go in a women's restroom, you're unwelcome, and the same if you go in a man's. So. In regards to being transgender, we just, we want a little more acceptance, a little more recognition. We don't want to have to be unsafe every time we leave the house, every time we open our mouths. We don't want to be misunderstood when we explain that we don't feel right in the body we were born in. That's all. Hi, I'm Mr. McGrath, the information specialist at E.J. King Middle and High School. Let me show you where the books are about gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people, as opposed to birds or other creatures. Most any library in the world, the books are arranged according to the Dewey Decimal System. And because uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans, just transgender questioning is not something we've made up, it really happens. It's in the nonfiction section. In the 306 section, in our library, right now it happens to be on this top shelf over here, and we have it's mixed in with teens and sex and families. If so it, it's here and there. We have gay in America, homosexuality, interracial, interracial relationships, kids still having kids. And if we keep going on here, we have friendship, dating, and relationships, teens being gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. I can be a father, I can be a mother, some elementary style books, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, teens, and society, gay marriage, um, the big book of family. I mean, we have everything. So, for example, in this particular book, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, teens, and society, in the back, we have a lot of uh, resources for more information, page 71. We have the Canadian Rainbow Health Coalition, we have their website and contact information. The Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network out of New York City, Human Rights Campaign, and looks like at least two more pages and then some websites. These might be a little bit more safe to go to, perhaps, than just Googling something. Um, a lot of books will have similar sections in the back of them. Um, and we have books about families as well in this section. So you're going to have to kind of, you know, look around a little bit. So uh, the nice thing is right here, we also have civil rights and things. So you can kind of be over here. You can be discreet as you're searching around if you, if you want to be. Or, you know, if you ever need help, you can go ask me. Or I know the books in this library pretty well. Um, or if you need other information, there's plenty of people at this school, as this video is pointing out, to uh, get help from it. Thank you. One of the nice things about using the high school library is I don't have to 
ask you why you're looking for something. You could be doing this for a report, you could be doing this for another friend of yours, you could do it for your own curiosity, but it's none of my business and I, you know, it's all cool. So, you know, you don't have to tell me why you're getting it. Hi, my name is Mike Murphy. I'm a guidance counselor at E.J. King High School. Um, I'm here speaking with Savannah Jackson, who's creating this video uh, as a way to help support kids who are dealing with their own sexuality and concerns of how to handle some of the harassment that goes on. Um, you know, in a guidance office at, at the school level, typically your guidance counselor is going to keep anything said in the room. It's going to keep it between you and them. Um, there are limitations to that. Anytime it's dealing with somebody being hurt or the possibility of somebody being hurt, um, that's when confidentiality, confidentiality goes out the window. Um, <clears throat> things you can talk about with your guidance counselor, sometimes it just helps to have someone listen and hear you and validate some of the, the troubles you're going through. Um, the guidance counselor can also direct you towards resources within the community that are available uh, to help support whatever lifestyle you may or may not have chosen to live. And it's important to have support and it's important uh, to have someone to discuss uh, the issues you're facing now. Um, sometimes you can feel very isolated and very out of control and when those things happen and the alternatives sometimes are grim because you don't have anyone walking you through um, basically a path that thousands upon thousands of students have walked through before. Um, that's about what I have. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Miss Teresa. Some of you know me. I'm the ASEX counselor here. And what I do in a nutshell is help navigate your teen years. What does that include? That can include a lot of things. Whatever peers are challenged with or whatever students are challenged with that's going on in their life, that's what I serve, including the LGBTQ population. So I want to tell you a little bit about the history of this population that I've worked with that um, I'm very proud of and stuff. Um, and I want to just go over it just briefly. I work with four organizations in the Bay Area, uh, four very big organizations. And one of them was, uh, I just want to tell you about one of them very briefly. It was a place called VOICES. VOICES stands for Voice Our Independent Choice for Emancipation Support. In this group, um, we came up with the, um, the LGBTQ uh, population and stuff. And there was only two uh, students that uh, were willing to talk about it and stuff, but we felt that there was a need and we got to a facilitator to help and they started a group and stuff. Now, four years later, that group is over 100 people um, at, for people that needing support and a safe place to go. And it's just a really uplifting thing that I was a, got to be a participant in and work with the director on how he formed the program. So it was really neat and I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's outstanding. Um, some of the things we covered in there was a LGBTQ uh, 101 course for basic things and what that is is just exactly what we read in, these, uh, in the script here was about education. Education is the key to a lot of things here. There's a lot of uh, misconceptions and uh, not educated on it and it's just really good just to even get the terminology in. So education was the main thing behind it and that helped us increase awareness to help other people. We also work with collaboration with other agencies to help uh, this population. And the last thing we did was engage the community. As I go on all the um, all my presentations and I have my rainbow bracelet, uh, it's one of the things that I uh, have in my office to display to people that um, it is a friendly place to go. And if they want services or uh, to talk to anybody about it, that I'm there for them. I'm not going to go through the other three organizations, but they did basically the same thing in a different way. But this one was really neat because it was very young youth, um, including high school youth. So it was very neat. I just wanted to share that with you.